I personally find that Google is amazing. I love to Google how to make lotion, how to make soap, how to make chicken in the Instant Pot, but I actually lose track of the recipes and the process and I write them down. In fact, I have my own little recipe jar, but it kind of gets old doing that after a while. I would rather have it actually in a book. My name is Alexa and I write the blog at duvallhomestead.com and today I want to share with you some books that you can get if you are interested in starting homesteading, natural remedies, cooking, anything involving taking your home and your health and your life into your own hands. If you are wondering where to get started with that and you're looking for some books. A lot of people just don't know where to start and it's a little bit scary. How do I cook? How do I make a roast chicken? How do I use herbs to heal a common cold or something like that. So another good thing about books is that they can be kind of encyclopedias. It's like if you learn how to use rosemary and herb in your cooking and how to dry it and how to extract it and how to drink it and how to give it to the chickens. I have kind of my complete list of where I get a lot of my information and where I learn how to do these things. So I wanted to share that with you. So if your internet was down or you house, you had a resource to figure out how to make or do something on your own if that was your only option or if you just wanted to give it a try. Okay, so I'm going to start with the Homesteader's Herbal Companion. This is by Amy Fowell, and I may be pronouncing that wrong. Herbs, to me, are not very scary because you can A, buy them at the store, and B, grow them quite easily. So I started with this one because anyone can go pick up herbs at the store, either pre-cut or as a seed or as a starter plant. And with this book, you can learn how to make soaps, salves, tinctures, and maintain the health of livestock with herbs. Now, if you don't have livestock, there are some tips on how to maintain your own health, promote immunity, and a bunch of other things in this book for using herbs for your own health. It also talks about uses of different herbs. For example, I just opened to a random page and it says cayenne pepper is really good for bone and muscle aches, back pain, occasional soreness. Chamomile is good for soothing irritated skin, and you can make salves, lotions, soaps, and hand creams with those. Herbs for cooking, how to make vinaigrette and food. So no matter who you are, no matter how much cooking experience you have, there is going to be something in this book that is so super easy for you to do that you can learn a lot from. My next book is called Essential Oils and Ancient Medicine, and it's by Dr. Josh Axe. Ty Bollinger and Jordan Lewis. So um, Dr. Axe is one of my favorite doctors to listen to via YouTube. Um, and this book is incredible. This is like an encyclopedia for essential oils. So, um, like I talked about making oils out of herbs in the last book, this is for if you buy really nice essential oils, kind of where to start with that because there are so many essential oils out there and he is a doctor who talks about that specifically. And what I love about this book is it goes two ways. First, it tells you about if you have a common symptom, a sore throat or a scratch on your skin, uh, what oils are best and how to use them for that. And then the other half of the book is, is listed by oil type. So it says, okay, if you have some lavender, what do you do with lavender? If you have oregano, what do you do with oregano? So whether or not you're trying to deal with a homeopathic health improvement, or you're trying to just figure out what to do with the two oils that you do have, you will find the answer in this book. Then I just turned to a random page for muscle aches. And it says essential oils for muscle aches. Peppermint and wintergreen are effective natural pain relievers and muscle relaxants. Lavender is for muscle spasms, cramps, sprains. And then it also gives you a nice recipe for a home remedy. So for a muscle compress, if you wanna make a homemade muscle compress, put three drops of peppermint oil, three drops of cypress oil, one teaspoon of coconut oil on the area, and then cover it with a hot compress for three to five minutes. We have kind of a personal medicine cabinet at home, if you will, of a whole bunch of oils, this book, and a few other books. Um, and if something happens, we do reference that. Now I wanna caveat that to say that definitely still we still go to the doctor when needed when we are trying to do something homeopathic we are able to reference this great book use our oils and know what we're doing with that okay so the third book and this is third in terms of simplicity would be the natural chicken keeping handbook and this is by the same author as the herbal companion book so amy fuel and she is really great um i love this book i got this when we first got chickens and it was again it was the same kind of thing where i was googling everything and sometimes Google can just take you on a ride or you just don't wanna be on that train. So I was Googling everything and whenever my chicken would have an issue or I, was, I thought they had an issue but they really didn't, I would Google it and it was like, this could be cancer or it could be 
you know, nothing. They're just tired. So I really appreciate having a book of some from someone who has been chicken keeping forever about um, natural remedies for your chickens, what to do when something happens, how to build a coop, how to take care of chickens, what to feed them, how to make your own feed, um, all that stuff. So that's what's in this book. Okay, number four, and this is getting a little more not advanced, but just more sophisticated. So number four is one of my favorite books of all time. This is probably my number one book on this entire list, by the way. Nourishing Traditions by Sally Fallon. It's a hefty one, and this is like a, an encyclopedia of cooking. Now, it's not a cookbook like Whole30 or a Keto Cookbook or a Gluten-Free Cookbook with a bunch of recipes. It's not just that. This actually teaches you how to cook. So it teaches you how to make things from scratch so how to ferment vegetables, how to make bread, how to make broth and real soup, how to use animal bones. Um, so it's packed with recipes, yes, but it really teaches you more how to cook with a lot of explanation of why ancient cooking methods worked and why people did what they did. A lot of the reason why I love this book is that it really goes into the evolution of our cooking and our food over time. We have an amazing world nowadays where we have a lot of technology and advancements in our food processing system, which can be great because it means that we have more access to more food. But processing food does take away, can take away some of the natural elements of the food and diminish the benefits that a lot of food had when it was just used in its raw form. And so this is a great cookbook for learning how to cook really whole food and learning why it's so important to do that and not just buy processed food all of the time. Not trying to shame you for buying processed food because we all buy processed food at some point. But if you are trying to transition to a whole food diet and you're trying to learn why is it that some people can't tolerate grain, you'll find a lot of answers in this book and you might even solve your issue. All right, next we are getting a little bit more tricky now, and this is a book that I have not even gotten through all the way, but this is Simple Farmhouse Life, and this is by Lisa Bass from Farmhouse on Boone, who's one of my favorite bloggers, and this book goes into home DIY projects, um, natural products like lotion and soap, and then sewing project projects, which I have not done, but there are a lot of how-to tutorials like I just opened up to how to dry flowers, how to make simple laundry detergent, how to make lip balm, how to make a sugar scrub, how to sew a grain sack pillow cover, how to create a plate gallery wall, how to clean your cast iron skillet, a fruit and veggie wash, how to make an apron. It's a lot of stuff just for around your house. So how to make a lot of the things that we buy. And this is something that I'm personally really interested in because I am trying to buy less and less and make more and more. And it's really a big process to do that, which is why I, I didn't put this book as the very first one to buy because it's expensive if you want to start. If you're someone who's never made soap or lotion before, you're going to have to buy the materials to make it. But the good news is you buy a lot of these things in bulk and you buy them once and then you make a lot. So it saves you money in the long run, but not to be overwhelmed by it because if you're just starting to make things from scratch, you want to learn how to sew and you need a sewing machine and then you need fabric and it's like you don't want to feel overwhelmed. Um, but this is a really great place to start for starting to do handmade home projects, things like that. Okay, next book is a little bit more technical. This is the Wellness Mama cookbook. Wellness Mama is another one of my absolute favorite people to listen to on podcasts. Now she's had a podcast for many years. I've listened to her for a long time. She has a lot of recipes that are wholesome, easy to prepare, budget friendly, family approved. She's got several kids and she is all about eliminating processed foods and moving towards healthy home cooked meals. The recipes are focused on on grain free, um, no refined sugars, no harmful fats. So she's got a variety of different kinds of recipes in here, but if you are looking for that really clean eating, um, this is a great resource for breakfast, lunch, and dinner recipes for family. She's got kids, so um, really great book, and her podcast is incredible. She is a wealth of knowledge. Okay, the next book on my countertop is My Sweet Kitchen by Linda Lomolino, and this is a really fun book. Again, a little bit more technical, but it is all about sweets and desserts. 
So it teaches you how to make skillet baked chocolate chip cookies, lemon meringue cake. Meringue is one of my favorite things to make during the holidays. Apple fritters. It kind of goes through by baking essentials, how to prepare pans, how to make pie crust, lemon curds, vanilla and nuts, macaroons, buttercream, sponge cake, and it's just got incredibly beautiful photography. And it's my go-to when I had a girlfriend a couple years ago getting married. I was her um, maid of honor and I threw her a bridal shower and I just pulled this book out first thing and was like, all right, let's pick five things. <laughs> but I only ended up making, I think, two. But um, this is like my go-to for if we're, if we're gonna throw a party or a special occasion and you wanna make something really sweet, this has got some great ideas. Okay, the next book on the list is a little bit more medical. So I have it towards the end of the list because some people are just not into this stuff, but this is called The Rain Barrel Effect by Dr. Stephen Cabral. Dr. Stephen Cabral is just like Dr. X, one of my favorite doctors to listen to. I love listening to health-related podcasts, listening to doctors. He is a naturopathic doctor and he is so knowledgeable. He was diagnosed with a disease at the age of like 16, thought he wasn't going to survive, um, overcame a lot of his own health challenges by finding the root of the problem instead of just putting on band-aids via going to the doctor or taking a medication. Not saying those things aren't important and he did those things, but the point being, that he is very passionate about actually fixing the underlying cause of health problems in our world today. Um, and he says things and breaks things down in a way that people who are not medical people can really understand. And I have not actually read the book, The Rain Barrel Effect, but I have listened to hundreds of his podcasts. And the book is about how when you kind of do one thing to your health, like you eat processed foods, you're going to crave more processed foods, and then you have stress of your body trying to digest that, that food, then you have stress on the outside and it's about kind of building up the rain barrel in your body and how that eventually tips people over into having autoimmune diseases and problems, just so many problems. It's kind of just the theory of peeling back layers one by one of trying to be eating whole foods, um, taking a very naturopathic approach to health in terms of fixing the root of the problem, lowering stress and all these things that add to your rain barrel. Lastly, this book is a little bit different which is why I have it last on the list than the rest of them, but I recommend The Untethered Soul and I have read this book, but I don't have it with me because I think I gave it to my mom and I think I can't find it. But it's called The Untethered Soul and I will leave a link below this video to all of these books I'm talking about. I think that they're on Amazon. But this is a really great book for kind of more spirituality and good mental mindset. It's about letting things go. It's about living every day in the present and it's about not worrying about the future and how to just live a very light and free and clear, clear and pure life, um, not holding on to anything that's holding you back. So it's a really fun read if you like kind of a more soulful book. So I want to add that one to the list as well. Okay, well, thank you so much for watching this video on my top books for our farmhouse counter. I hope that this helped you and gave you some ideas for how to just improve your home, improve your food, improve your life. That is what is so much fun. Well, thank you so much for stopping by. If you're new to my page, make sure you subscribe on YouTube. Every week I post new videos on homestead living, farm to table eating, and homemade natural lifestyle. Thanks for stopping by the homestead.